but yeah, I, I love how well done that part is. The good news is we're almost done with this extra hard section. Uh, this is more or less the final stretch. So we can stand all the way to this side. There we go. Uh, cool. There we are. So again, we're more or less using these machine guns to guide the way for us. Whether or not that's a good strategy is yet to be determined. Alright, following it up. Now we're on an incline, you can see. Oh god, because... Oh man, that was close. <laughs> can only climb so fast. I think that right there might be our salvation. But we've got to time it. Like everything else in this game, it's got to be timed just right. Oh boy. Is it going to get us? Uh, whew, close. I think that's it. I think that is the end of that section. That very difficult and unforgiving section. Which, like I said, I was supposed to show in a bonus video, but I kind of stumbled upon it by accident here. You actually can't get to that area normally in when you play the game. Because normally you'll come upon that candle area and there's a wall blocking you from going further. <laughs> but in this case, after you beat the game, it's opened up to you. Ding! Alright, the reason I say ding is because that's the name of the achievement that you get when you beat that area. So, we really didn't miss much. There were a couple kind of cool puzzles, but I like to think that that area is a lot more interesting, so... You know what, I don't regret that decision, to accidentally stumble upon that area. In fact, I didn't even know about it the first time I played this, because... Well, obviously I didn't know about it, because you don't... Like I said, you don't have it available at first. But I, had, I looked it up after, after the fact and saw people talking about it, so... That's how I heard about the little bonus area that's unlocked after you beat the game. So we've been introduced to the machine guns pretty well enough, so we've, I think we've got a good handle on how those things work. There's a box up here, but we need that thing broken down for us. So what we can do is lower this thing, or raise this thing up, attract the attention, and have it shoot it down. From there, I think the area we need to go is to the left there, because to the right, I don't think we. I don't think there's much at all, actually. Oh wait, no, I was. Oh, there's another box, I think. There's something that we need on the left side there. Also notice the tree in the background. We're actually in the wilderness again, but we see pipes and machinery stuck to it. So we're still kind of in industrial areas, sort of. So let's lower that back down. I do know that we have to go to the left for some reason. I just can't remember what that reason is. There's a method to my madness, I swear. Yeah, it's okay if it shoots the box. It's not going to hurt anybody. And oh, we go. I seem to recall... Yes, I was right. There is another box we have to get over here. It's not abundantly clear, though. Here's, I think, the first area where we see, like, a magnetized space. You can kind of see there's a very subtle line right here. There's a threshold that we enter it. It doesn't really affect anything. We can hit the switch. It actually alters the gravity. So it's anything within this area. Well, not anything. It's not affecting us. Although that will come later. There were some gravity puzzles puzzles later on in this game. But for now, I, I, I assume it's like maybe the box has metal inside it. There's some sort of assumption to be made there. But we can't actually go much further than this because, well, it's stuck on that against that wall. And the magnetic field here doesn't stretch that far. So I'll turn that off for now. But there is another magnetic field that we're supposed to, opt it, to activate. And the idea here is that it'll hit that slanted surface and bring it towards us, which is eventually towards the right. So, see it all? It all comes together. Oh, boy. Ooh, close. As we saw earlier, boxes that fall on you can and will kill you because they don't give a fuck. Ask me how many fucks they give. Zero. That's how many. One fuck. Ah, ah, ah. That's enough of that. And there's the machine gun thing. <laughs> I think that's really cool how that's well done. So this one affects gravity indiscriminately. So there's one box, and I think that other crashing noise we heard was box numero dos. There it is! We do need both of them for this puzzle. This is one of the ones. This area I remember practicing relatively heavily because there are some, there are some pretty tricky puzzles here. I think anyone who's played this game knows some of the puzzles that I'm talking about as they start to come up. I'm just going to push both these at the same time, save myself some work here. 
because I'm a lazy bastard, let's not forget. Alright, I find myself saying this a lot, but the idea here is that we need one box on both of these platforms. Plus we need gravity to go the other direction so we can climb down the ladder and continue on our merry way. So what I'm going to do is place this box to pretty much right the edge of where this one will be. Or where it'll end up, rather. We place this one also pretty much towards the edge. Let me just make sure it lines up correctly before committing myself to jumping down. Cool, that should be good. Alright, that should be relatively fine. Now, right as that thing comes out just a little bit. There we are. So I'll make this jump here, make this, and we're good. That wasn't so bad. Oh, don't worry, it gets worse. It always does. I say that in a good way, because this game's fucking awesome. But I mean the puzzles get worse, and a lot more difficult at that. This being one of them. This puzzle is notorious in this game for... If, like, unless you don't know exactly what to do, unless you look it up and you see how it's done, this can take you forever to figure out. Because there's two switches here. One switch right here flips on the gravity for all metal objects. Note that we're not flying up here. And there's another one with this magnet thing switch that activates like a magnetic field on the ceiling there. So anything stuck to the ceiling will continue to stay stuck. As long as it is held. So this path is clear for us, which is good. We can climb up here, which is all fine and dandy. But we realize, oh shit, we can't make that jump because that thing's blocking our path. We need that down and this one up. So how the fuck do we do it? Well, it all comes... It's a timing puzzle, and it's kind of a magnetic puzzle as well. Like I said, that magnetic strip thing will keep anything that's grounded, grounded. So when I turn this switch off, everything should stay put. So, it's because of the magnet thing. Instead, though... Let's see if I can remember how to do this exactly. Well, yeah, because if that's activated and that's deactivated, it won't make any difference. So what I'm going to do is deactivate that one. Hmm. Let's see if this will do the trick. Nope, it will not. In fact, I'm positive of it. Okay, now I remember. Raise that down. Like, lower both of those. Turn that on. You gotta turn this one, and then turn this one on, and then off, in quick succession. I, oh, yes, I, there it is, yeah, you can kind of, if you listen for it, you can hear the thing hit in the background. The idea here is that when you hit that switch, it raises the gravity for all metal objects indiscriminately. But w while that one's gr raising up, you deactivate it, so the momentum of this one going up is enough for it to hit the ceiling and stick to the magnet strip because of the magnetic switch that we've activated. However, the distance from this one to the ceiling is different from the difference from this one to the ceiling. So by the time that one hits the ceiling, you have enough time for this one to drop back down. It's very, very tricky to figure that out. I had to look it up because I'm too stupid to figure this shit out on my own, but I thought that was fucking brilliant.